Hello, we at St. Joseph's Episcopal Church in Salado, Texas, welcome you to a reading of the scripture and Father Jerry's sermon for the 21st Sunday after Pentecost. We invite you to pray with us today, October 25th. If this is your first time hearing us, know that we wish you good health and happiness. We can't wait to meet you in person in our little church in the near future when this pandemic passes. The Collect. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy 34, 1 through 12. Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him the whole land, Gilead as far as Dan, all Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the western sea, the Negev and the plain, that is the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, as far as Zoar. The Lord said to him, This is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab at the Lord's command. He was buried in a valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor, but no one knows his burial place to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His sight was unimpaired and his vigor had not abated. The Israelites wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. Then the period of mourning for Moses was ended. Joshua, son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him and the Israelites obeyed him, doing as the Lord had commanded Moses. Never since has there arisen a prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. He was unequaled for all the signs and wonders that the Lord sent him to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all his servants and his entire land, and for all the mighty deeds and all the terrifying displays of power that Moses performed in the sight of all Israel. The word of the Lord. Psalm 90, verses 1 through 6 and 13 through 17. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth or the land and the earth were born, from age to age you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, go back, O child of earth. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You sweep us away like a dream. We fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withered. Return, O Lord, how long will you tarry? Be gracious to your servants. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Make us glad by the measure of the days that you afflicted us and the years in which we suffered adversity. Show your servants your works and your splendor to their children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands and prosper our handiwork. A reading from Paul's first letter to the church in Thessalonica 2, 1 through 8. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain. But though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. 
as you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext for greed, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew 22, 34 through 46. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and all the prophets. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David, he said to them. How is it then that David by the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. The sermon for October 25th, 2020, proper 25. Deuteronomy 34, 1 through 12, 1 Thessalonians 2 through, uh, second, first, first Thessalonians 2, 1 through 8, Psalm 90, 1 through 6, 13 through 17, Matthew 22, 34 through 46. A little boy was selling newspapers on the corner. The people were in and out of the cold. The little boy was so cold that he wasn't trying to sell many papers. He walked up to a policeman and said, Mister, you wouldn't happen to know where a poor boy could find a warm place to sleep tonight, would you? You see, I sleep in a box up around the corner there, down the alley, and it's awful cold in there for tonight. Sure would be nice to have a warm place to stay. The policeman looked down at the little boy and said, you go down the street to that big white house and you knock on the door. When they come out the door, you just say, John 316, and they will let you in. So he did. He walked up the steps, knocked on the door, and a lady answered. He looked up and said, John 316. The lady said, Come on in, son. She took him in, and she sat him down in a split-bottom rocker in front of a great big old fireplace, and she went off. The boy sat there for a while and thought to himself, John 316, I don't understand it, but it sure makes a cold boy warm. Later she came back and said to him, Are you hungry? He said, Well, just a little. I haven't eaten in a couple of days, and I guess I could stand a little bit of food. She took him in the kitchen and sat him at the table full of food. He ate and ate until he couldn't eat any more. Then he thought, John 316, I sure don't understand it, but it makes, sure makes a hungry boy full. She took him upstairs to a bathroom, to a bathtub filled with warm water, and he sat there and soaked for a while. He thought to himself, John 316, I don't understand it, but it sure makes a dirty boy clean. The lady got him, took him to a room, tucked him in into an old feather bed, pulled the covers up, kissed him good night, and turned out the lights. He thought to himself, I don't understand, but it sure makes a tired boy rest. In the morning, the lady came back and took him down again to that same table of food. After he ate, she took him back to the room with the fireplace and picked up a big old Bible. She sat down and looked into his young face. Do you understand, John 3.16? She asked gently. He replied, no, ma'am, I, I don't. The policeman told me to say it to whomever opened the store. She opened the Bible to John 3.16 and began to explain to him about Jesus. Right there in front of the fireplace, 
He gave his heart and his life to Jesus. He sat there and thought, John 3.16, I don't understand it, but it sure makes a lost boy feel safe. In Deuteronomy, in its last chapter, the Hebrew people are about to enter the Promised Land, and it is Moses' time to give leadership over to Joshua and for him to enter God's kingdom. He had anointed Joshua, and the Spirit gave Joshua the gift of wisdom. This gift was not for knowledge, but for the understanding, judgment, and insight which equipped him to lead Israel. The laying on of hands was a sign that God had chosen Joshua to be Moses' successor. In order to make himself known to his people, God empowered human leaders to lead in historical acts and to interpret those acts as God's acts. Moses had led the people out, delivered many miracles to the Egyptian pharaoh, to their people and to his people that allowed Moses to bring them to this point. It was now time to enter the land of God, the, the land God had promised them, and Joshua was to lead them. From the very beginning, God had revealed his love for his people by sending Moses to carry them out of Egypt and for Joshua to lead them into their new land. In Thessalonians, we read one of the most compassionate and loving addresses to the Thessalonica church. He gave them an outline of his methods of evangelism and gave us today an example to follow. He ministered for God's glory. He ministered selflessly. He ministered in humility. He ministered with care and sacrificial love, and he ministered long and laboriously. It is, it little, uh, it is little wonder that Paul could say, our visit to you was not a failure. In Matthew, the Pharisees find out how Jesus had silenced the Sadducees and had asked a question about resurrection, and they didn't believe in it anyway, and marriage with several children and one wife involved as the first and subsequent six husbands, uh, all brothers. The real, question was, the real question was at the resurrection, whose wife will she be? Jesus said, you don't know the scriptures or the power of God. At the resurrection, people will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They will be like the angels in heaven. But at the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what God said to you? I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Now enter the Pharisees who have come to test Jesus with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hand on these two commandments. Personal character grows out of love for God. Loving God leads us to love other people. Such love will result in actions which comply with all of God's moral demands. Love is the starting point for Christian ethics. Therefore, people are expected to be, to, to be related both to God and to other persons through a commitment of sacrificial giving love. Loyalty and faithfulness are to characterize such relationships. Jesus provided the best summary possible of all the Old Testament revelation. He focused all scripture on the priority of a right relationship with God and then with neighbors. Christian love is the active, vitalizing power necessary in Christian living. Jesus' command to love God is directed primarily to the will rather than the emotions. To regard him above all else, to give him unchallenged first place, and to give his claims unquestioned priority. This means to love him and all that he loves. The Pharisees also questioned how he could be the son of God when he was born after David. Son of David applied to Jesus, but was inadequate to describe the Messiah's role since Messiah was David's master. Messiah was son of God and provided salvation through death and resurrection, not through military victory. Back to the story of the little boy and the lady in the big white house. And don't forget about the policeman who sent that boy to the house saying, John 3.16. When the lady opened the door, she obviously recognized he was cold, and she put him in front of the fireplace and let him warm up. She knew he was hungry, so she fed him. The boy was dirty, and she prepared him a warm bath with a nice bed to crawl into, covered him up, and kissed him on the forehead. 
The next morning, she once again took him into the kitchen and fed him. Then, and only then, she took him back in front of the fireplace and set him down and read the passage from the Bible and helped him to understand the true meaning of the passage. It was then that he didn't understand everything, but it did make a lost boy feel safe. The lady took care of his immediate needs and made him feel special before she talked to him about the Bible passage. This is the same model we need to follow in our own lives. Amen. We at St. Joseph's Church in Salado thank you for joining us today. Although we can't greet you in person, we pray daily for you. Our Daughters of the King members accept prayer requests, which you may call in, email, or drop in the box in the chapel. Our office phone is 254-947-3160. God loves you, and so do we. Until next week, be well.